Pro tip, it works better if you plug it in. See, if you turn it on, it does that. If you plug it in, it works way better if you plug it in. What's up, Light Bright Nation? There is finally light at the end of the tunnel. Brittany's buggy has been completely torn apart. I redid the whole exhaust system, and now we are finally gonna put this thing back together. New fuel system, new EFI system, new ignition system, all new wiring, new to it headlights, new gauges. We're gonna go through the dash. We're gonna rewire this entire thing because I started going through it before. I didn't like a lot of it. Uh, some of it was actually melted, had gotten hotter, had shorted out on something at one point in time. So we just ended up ripping all of it out except for a couple of wires because they were already ran. Um, so let's show you what we got. All right, I'm sure you've seen this in a prior video, but we have the new Holly Sniper EFI. The old system, if you remember, the injectors were on top and it was an old system and it had an ECM and everything with it. The new system, if you have a carbureted car and you wanna go EFI, this is the only thing you need. It bolts right up. All of the injectors and everything are inside of here. The map, you just need to give it fuel and a return. This little guy right here goes to your spark box. You have to get a distributor with an out. We also got the HyperSpark coil for it. We're gonna go with a small display because this is the buggy. You can get a really nice five inch dash um, if you order that for this system. So if you're gonna put this in like a street car or a street truck, you can get the bigger dash and have all of your gauges on it. But uh, because this is a buggy, we only need a couple of gauges. So we did get new auto meter digital or electronic gauges, not mechanical, especially the oil pressure. We don't like mechanical oil pressure gauges because then you have that one hose that comes up to the back of it. And if it breaks, you're getting hot oil all over the inside of the car. Typical volts and water temp because we want to know the water temp at all times. And we did get the upgraded PDM. So this has, this is a really neat piece. This has all of the outs that you need. The ins come from the ECU and it has extra outs. So you can control, a, it'll control a fan for you. This is all digital relays inside of here. So this thing is pretty neat. So you don't need extra relays. Everything is in here and circuit breakers, digital circuit breakers. So we'll show you how this thing works uh once we get all this in and then there's a couple of other things like the wiring on the winch this is the ground this is the ground cable i don't think it needs to be this long and get bolted to somewhere behind the dash so i am going to cut that short and put it on the frame down here We'll put a nice ground lug here for the winch. Um, we're gonna simplify a lot of this wiring just because uh, the winch comes with 10 feet of power and ground doesn't mean I'm gonna use 10 feet of power and ground. I'm going to cut it short and make it go directly where it needs to go. We do have new air switches. These things are really neat. So they just control air for the air lockers. Instead of being electronic, these are pretty much fail safe. Probably gonna get rid of this little gauge guy and I'll just put a smaller pressure switch in it. So I'll just put like a, a 90 or a 110 pressure switch instead of the, I think it's got a 150 in it right now. What do you need 150 PSI in that tank for? I don't want it there. We're gonna add cup holders too. She's gotta have cup holders for her water bottles. So yeah, we're gonna get started on this. I'm gonna start laying it out in the dash and figuring out where everything can go and we'll go from there. All right, one thing I wanted to show you guys is this, this is the harness that was in the dash. So this was like a fuel pump relay, ignition relay, some other relay. This one still says headlights on it. I'm pretty sure one of these was the high beams. I think there was a headlight and a high beam. This just went down to the compressor as green, right? And then I was looking for it up on the dash. That's blue. So that's another reason why we yanked all this out. All the fan relays and everything that has to do with it running is all right here now. This has all the digital relays, circuit breakers and everything is in this box, which gets rid of half of that mess the other half of that mess will be controlled by the switch pros which should be here today and i'll show you how all about that so there will be almost nothing in the dash except for this and the switch pros brain and that's going to make it super convenient and you don't need any of that and this was the center console that she had in here so this guy was was right here. So now we're gonna cut some cup holders into this, or at least one, one cup holder into this. She needs those two switches right there because they're right next to her seat. 
and she can reach them with her fingers while she's holding onto the seat and bracing herself all at the same time. So she knows where those two are. That's the front one, that's the rear one. The ignition switch, we don't need this anymore because this is gonna be controlled by the Switch Pros, which should be right here on the dash when I get it done. So I think I'm probably gonna start here so that I can get the hoses and everything cleaned up in here before we start throwing in some wiring. All right, so we got the console stripped. Um, I don't need that circuit breaker on there anymore, so we're not gonna put that back on there. And we are gonna just find a piece of aluminum, trace this out. When these two air switches are in it and the this battery cutoff is on there and the wires are through here, this hold down right here is a hoop and these wires were underneath that. So you couldn't lift it up and there's a seat there and a seat here. You couldn't really get around it either way. So what I think I'm gonna do, and you don't use this to press on or you push it down. There's a tab up here that it located in. So I think what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna actually cut this off I'm gonna put inserts in this. That was the other thing. This was nut and bolted. So you had to like get your hand in from back here underneath to get to these nuts over here because there's a seat there and a seat here. You couldn't, just a mess. So we're gonna put two inserts in here, one insert in here, and I'm gonna cut this off so that all the cabling, I can lift this up and put it back down. It was really tough with this. But for now, we're gonna cut out a new one. So the way I'm gonna wire this, I'm gonna make sure everything is long enough and it's gonna come out this backside, probably in this general direction. So that if I need to get in here, I can take it off and then flip it up. If I make all these wires too short, you won't be able to lift it up and you'll have to like assemble it with it together and that's gonna suck. I can't really go forward cause there's really the, the shifters right here. So you can't go forward. So I'm gonna have to make everything go back to that horseshoe bar and then around and down. So you can get in here and service this. There's also <laughs> gonna be a cup holder here. So I gotta watch out for that. So I think as long as I can get everything down through this section, I'll be able to open this up and be able to put all my connectors and stuff on here if we have any issues or change the switch out or even replace these switches in the future. You'll just be able to take these three bolts out, flip it up, get to everything, put it back down, bolt it down. That was the problem when we broke the switch originally. All these hoses were everywhere under there and we couldn't, I couldn't get it up. We had to like move some stuff underneath and, and cut some stuff and then put it back together later just to get to the switch that was broken originally. Forward thinking a little bit, just make everybody a little bit longer so you have a loop here so I can open this up. As you can see, once we have it in the buggy, this line is going to be too short. And here's another thing you can see. The airline was ran under this power cable, so I couldn't get this up. And then you can see this is your front locker line. This was zip tied into the frame and the chassis down here. So once you got to here, it wouldn't, I couldn't lift this up because it was all zip tied in down there. You can see the zip tie marks. We're gonna have to make this guy longer so that we can get it to loop and come back. The rear one is fine. It's definitely long enough. These two battery cables that are gonna go to the switch need to be just routed so that they're easy to get to in the future. I don't know if this one's gonna be long enough. It appears to be. We're just gonna have to cut these zip ties and I'll make all this harness go in one direction. And then we need to get the alternator feed line onto the other side of this. So that's another line I have to run which is not in here currently. So it's gonna have to be ran. I think it was, it was just part of that harness I yanked out of here. So we'll just run a new line and we'll get the center console buttoned up so that we can get the rest of the wiring to travel with it. Because those two fans that are on the back of that cooler, uh, yeah, that was a mess that was ran through here. Those two fans and the fan on that cooler are all gonna be on their own harnesses with their own connectors. And it's gonna follow this harness and then run up that power wire up into the dash because that's where it goes. Let's just get this hose stuff. I do have more three-quarter lines, so we'll have to redo this three-quarter line that goes from the compressor. I'm gonna have to find another switch too. I think that switch is too tall. And then run a new hose from there to this feed. All right, I know you can't tell, but I have a new 
power wire that's going to run to the battery because the other one was short. The one that runs up to the bulkhead is plenty long enough and I ran a new battery. Loops around and then comes out. I don't have an end down it yet so it's just whoop down there. I ordered a new fuel filter for that guy because it's pretty black. I was going to start at the tank. The tank has an in and an out on the bottom and it used to have these two one-way valves. One for the feed and one for the return. And they were zip tied right on this bar up under here, but I didn't like that. So I'm going to build a bracket and mount these guys side by side so that they're up out of the way of the arms. They're kind of up in the cage so they're protected and I can swing both of them. So I'm going to mount them something like this. So this will be the feed because it wants to open up that way. Right now it's closed and this would be the return because this will want to close that way so I can run both of these levers basically right next to each other about an inch and a quarter apart and I'll build a bracket that will pick up both of these and then I'll weld it to the cage so it'll just be a flat bracket. This will go in one way, this will go in the other way and that's how we're going to mount it. So they're about an inch and a quarter apart, about an inch away from the coping of that one inch and a half tube and I'll make a bracket real quick. All right, and this is what we came up with. So this will just sit on top of the bar. You can turn both of these on and turn both of them off and they're up out of the way and this is very secure. So I like this a lot. This is what we're gonna go with. So now we're gonna take this back apart, clean up that frame and then we'll get these guys on there. All right, a little bit of paint, and that's what she looks like. And they're in there. Now I can turn them both off. I can turn them both on. They're not in the way. They're going to just clear the top of this bar and then drop down behind the seat. They're not dangling. They're actually up in the cage a little bit. So tomorrow I will finish. Uh, the new fuel pump has got to go in here and get wired, and then i got to make hoses and a return line. And I was cleaning out the, the fuel filters because I'm running all the fuel system. I don't know if you remember, but when I took it apart, I told you there was air hose, 3 8 air hose, airline hose, like shop airline running the system. So I'm cleaning out the pre-filter and this is why you don't use airline. Uh, there's more. Oh, you can't really see it, but there's more in there. This is what's inside the air hose. This is the rubber lining. So this is uh, exactly why you don't use it. All right, so we did get a new filter, finally. And I got some really cool switches, which I'll show you what these do in a little bit. I also got this really cool relay, which I'll show you what this does in a minute, because this is going to save us from running like a bunch of different relays and power lines and cables and stuff. Um, I did get some more airline to make those airlines longer. First, we're going to get these guys unscrewed up. I think I got a filter for that. I just got to find out where it went. Hmm. Or maybe I got a whole unit. I don't know. I'll have to ask Brittany. But uh, let's get some lines ran. All right. So we got the fuel lines buttoned up. So we're at all dash six everywhere around. So the two lines that come in and out of the tank come up and around and under to my fuel shutoffs. This side is fuel feed. This side is fuel return because that's the way they're pointed. So you can turn them both off. They're just here, so that's what they are. So when you're taking the tank out or cleaning stuff or whatever you're gonna do, they will stay open for the most part. And then you have this pre-filter, which just has a screen on it. So this is just to keep the big stuff from coming into the fuel system. So there's no filter in there necessarily. It just has a really big screen in this end. So it doesn't have a replaceable filter. It's just a large catch. So then this is the feed, comes all the way down. Um, I like to do this trick too. This is just a piece of hose with a zip tie around it. Keeps everything evenly spaced and keeps things from chattering on each other. I also have one here on this bar, holding it up, comes into the pump. Now, we used the original pump. Why? Because it worked. So we're gonna keep this pump and the pump that comes with the kit, which is over there on the bench, we're going to keep as a spare. So we're going to use the old pump because there was nothing wrong with it. And it fits already. Uh, so now we have a backup. And then it goes into this filter. This is your, I guess, pre-filter to the carb, post-filter after the pump, pre-filter to the throttle body, post-filter from the pump. That has a new filter in it. And then we just come out of here with a 45, come all the way up the wall. And this is just set on here for, for hose lengths. It's not, not really on here. I do have to get a 180 fitting here. So I just kind of threw this on here so I can get hose lengths because this is about where that hose is going to be. This 
throttle body injection has its own rail inside so it's a it's an in and out uh, and then the out hose just comes over here to our fuel pressure regulator this will be set later um, it is plumbed for now i also put protector here to this lip and a couple of adele clamps down here to keep the two from bouncing around on the wall and chafing and it also keeps them off of this wall because they're solid mounted not solid but they're held up here so they won't chafe on here i still have to put the floor in but there's slack on this we just gotta get the floor in and then it'll be spaced off of this lip so that it doesn't chafe on there so that's the fuel system for now i do want to put some tabs in it to hang the chase light and i want to get the headlights slash front blinkers wired to the dash um, i do have a blinker switch coming and a blinker relay and some other stuff coming and then we will start getting all the fuel injection stuff in here and, and start placing all of that in the dash. But for now, I think I'm just going to run a couple of more wires. I'm going to button up all the airlines. Always waiting on parts, you know, always. You never know. You get so far and then you're like, crap, I really need this piece. So you got to order that piece and that takes a day or two. We don't have any really cool speed shops local. So I have a couple of fittings coming, but uh, I'm going to get these airlines buttoned up and get the headlights and taillights wiring ran to the dash. I don't know if I showed you this or not. I did make a couple of brackets real quick to mount these LP9s, which have an amber glow to them. So that will be the, the blinker, and they are totally level this time because the old lights were not square in the grill. So they looked really funky. That reminds me, I gotta get a pair of switchback modules for these headlights. So what it'll do is if the headlights are on or even the running lights are on and you put a blinker on, it'll turn those off, use the amber as a blinker. And then when that signal turns off, it'll turn the headlight back on. Kind of like the new vehicles do. So I'm gonna have to order those right now. See, dang. But anyway, we'll get those on order right now too. So next I had to make some some mounts for the chase light. So these would mount on the bar like this, the overhead bar. Basically inch and, inch and three quarter. This guy will go right on there like that. You can weld it across the bottom, be a nice sturdy mount. So this is how I'm gonna hang the chase light because it used to be mounted on the roof and I don't want it mounted on the roof because every time you take the roof off, you have to take all the lights off the roof, which is, that's dumb. So I made these cool little tabs so we can put these on without, I don't know if I'm gonna mount it high or low or in or out or what I'm gonna do here, but these are the cool little tabs we're gonna build and we're gonna stick it on the back, back tube. All right, got these guys mounted up with some quarter 20 hardware. I know we got this disco thing going on today because for some reason that light right there wants to play disco, but hopefully that turns off in the next little bit after that light warms up. But here we go. Now we're gonna go see if we can get this fitted on the buggy. These guys are gonna sit a little bit not straight because it matches the bar, but this is where I want it because if or when, I hope she doesn't, but if she does, flop this thing we don't break this off because if it was way up here there's a possibility of breaking it off so we're going to suck it down below this bar and get this thing welded up on there all right we got the multimatic 220 out today pro tip it works better if you plug it in that is that is a fact um i was getting ready and i'm like no trigger oh yeah plug it in stupid see if you turn it on it does that if you plug it in it works way better if you plug it in All right, so I did a little thing on Britt's buggy. This might be a little bit, um, oh yeah, and I broke Phoebe's last weekend, so that's why she's in here, but don't pay attention to that. This might be a little bit too fancy for Britt's buggy, but I wanted to do it anyway. Let me show you what we did with the Baja Design LP6s. So I made the harness. I made them individual, so there's two sets here. There's a left and a right. Um, actually, this is the left, that's the right. These will go all the way to the dash and I will rewire them in the dash. But let me show you what we got going on here. This is called a switchback module. So what this allows us to do is we'll have ground hooked up and let's just say you have your running lights on, right? Running light is on. Now, if you activate a blinker, it turns the headlight off and activates the blinker. When the blinker is disengaged, 
the headlight will automatically come back on. That's what I'm doing for Brit's buggy. So she doesn't have to have extra lights up front. She could just use the amber of the LP6s as a blinker. Now what I am going to do, you're not supposed to run pin one and two at the same time. Or is it three and four? I don't know, the high beam and the low beam. So what I'm going to do is essentially put this on a single switch on the Switch Pros. It'll have a high beam and a low beam on a switch, but it'll disengage both of them. So what'll happen is she'll have high beams by themselves because essentially you'll never be on the street with your high beams on and a blinker you know the high beams are only for like adding the trail at night or if she needs the high beams but if she's in low beam like on the street the blinkers will work because she does plan on registering this and actually getting it plated this year so i still need to put a horn in it but we're going to do all that part later i do have the chase light worked out to do the same thing on a switch back so the tail lights will work the chase lights will work like they're supposed to which is what this other harness is for, but I'm gonna finish doing that. Anyway, yada, yada, yada. I'm gonna get this stuff installed and hopefully be able to demonstrate this in a minute. In typical fashion, I have changed my mind. So I was in the dash, trying to figure out the placement of everything and, and, and get it all screwed down. Come up with locations of everything because I have to put the two switchback modules, uh, a blinker relay, the Switch Pro box, a bunch of stuff for the Holly stuff, and I wanted to make it like look neat. So usually I would put things like mount them on a board and then wire everything together and then put the board in there. I was like, oh, I could do that for the switchbacks and the blinker relay and stuff. And then I was like, but then I got to put that in there and then wire that to these and then those to that. So I came up with a new plan. I'm going to do a half inch border and I'm going to cut this entire dash out all the way around here. And I'm going to put nut certs all the way around so that I can make a removable dash panel. Because I'm going to redo this and I really don't want these switches in it anyway. So I'm going to keep the gauges over there. But what that allows me to do is to make a 14 inch by 16 inch plate in that whole area and slide it through the face of the dash and bolt it down. So I can basically wire and build the entire thing outside of the buggy slide it in the dash, put the dash panel on there, you know, and open it up so I can wire in all the lights to the gauges and everything, which was a real pain in the butt before because everything was in here. So you had to like wire it to it. It was a pain in the butt. So come over here and I've already cut out a sheet of aluminum. So now I basically have to take all of this equipment and put it on this piece of aluminum. So I just have to bolt it down and then I can run all the wiring really nice. So when you get in there, you can see everything. Everything will have a home, everything will be labeled and you can just take the dash off and slide this whole plate in there and then just plug things in. Like it's gonna be great. So of course that's just more time. In order to get that plate into this dash, we need to cut the dash out. But before I do that, I need to make a new trim panel and get that bolted to this face and then get this cut out around the bolts and the holes and the inserts and stuff like that. So first thing we're gonna do is probably cut holes in this guy so we can get inserts into the dash. All right, now that we got our hole cut out, we can take this plate, slide that whole plate right into there. And that's how we're gonna do it. So now, with that being said, so now we gotta do layout in here and I have three gauges, a Switch Pros panel and the Holly EFI panel. So I have the sniper, I have this little guy that needs to go on here somewhere. It was on the left side of the steering wheel, but because we don't have any switches or anything, I'm gonna put everything on this side and not put anything on the little left panel. So I have this guy, I have the Switch Pros switch panel that'll go on here, and I have three of these little guys, gauges, three autometer gauges. The old dash, the autometer gauges were over here, closest to the steering wheel. But I don't want the switches all the way over here because then it's farther to reach. So I'm gonna swap those, because I don't need to touch the gauges. 
I just need to be able to read them. So I'm gonna put the three gauges over here, the switch panel, and then this guy right here. So we're gonna lay this all out. But on the top of the dash, I have a big bar. So I have to go below that bar to put the gauges in. So we're gonna mount them just, just about center. I wanted to put them up high because then I can really get them over, but we're gonna run into that bar that's up there. So I'm gonna have to put three gauges down the center, switch froze, this thing. So let's get that laid out. And that's about what she's gonna look like after we get her all cut out. We have three two inch gauges or two and an eighth or whatever autometer says they are. Switch pros and the sniper EFI controller should be all the way in here. It really doesn't do anything except for programming and you can probably monitor some things that you won't be on these three gauges. We'll have voltage, oil pressure, water temp. So those are the three important ones that we want to watch. I'll get these three guys cut out. That's probably going to get either double-sided taped or maybe I'll bolt that on there. And then Switch Pros goes through the back and gets bolted on. I'm going to go ahead and get these three cut out. And I think I'm going to wrap it up for the day. Right, and the dash is in. From Brittany's perspective, I think you can see all three gauges. You can see the EFI system. Everything's tucked off. I don't think anything's gonna go over here yet. So we do have some real estate for some future upgrades. I also, I don't know if Brittany will be able to reach those switches from her seat. So we'll see. What I might end up doing is putting this on a pedestal and, and kicking this out towards the steering wheel more so she has more access to it like, i don't remember i don't know if you remember when we did the bomber um i did the same thing for kevin and i got the i pulled the i pulled the switch pros way out here by the steering wheel for both him and Brittany in the race car so that he can get to all the buttons without even without loosening his belts they were right there at his fingertip now that everything has a place everything is where it needs to be next we get to wire everybody together and put the EFI system in it. Thanks for watching. Make sure you like and subscribe and share. And remember, you can get all your Lightbright merch and decals at lightbrightstudios.com. And we'll see you very soon.